curious, would you have any exercises to help us remember what truly matters in our life instead of focusing on all those insignificant little problems that can build up and create constant anxiety? This is from Pierre. So this exercise I'm going to share here, it's an exercise in listing your values or you might have a list of values or priorities and you can rank them then as what are important to you. These are my six and we'll see what you think personally. Maybe you can use these six, you can add to them, they'll be different for everybody. And then you rank them, what's most important to you. So the first thing I put down here is stress management, right? As a priority in your life, as something that's gonna be super important. Now, what I'm talking about is learning about why you're stressed, talking about adequate self-care, how to make conscious decisions in being productive, how to have proper boundaries with your work, healthy boundaries, sitting in contemplation, learning how to do body work, maybe meditation, any of that kind of thing. In other words, is there a space in your life for this? Okay, how much time do you invest in doing this? Stress management, if you want to call it that, okay? Self-development, you could call it, but any kind of a practice. Personally, I think this is a huge, huge priority. And it should be for many of us because again we live in this complicated environment there's a lot of stresses on us and if we're not proactive with it we're going to have these underlying anxieties okay um so have a practice that's my number one thing personally after many many years i've come to the personally uh, just for myself the only thing i have to do every day is a little bit of practice okay to maintain a kind of a healthy emotional mindset really that's it i must be proactive in that i have to do something on that every day twice a day per, for me personally but whatever it is for you set that as a priority do that first and see what happens in your life after that so that's number one okay some kind of a stress management um maybe a practice the second thing is now again this may not be top of the list for you and what i'm going to say here is it is is about is, is about your health okay now this is not a health and fitness channel far from it and i am certainly not a, an expert in health and fitness i mean i'm I, i'm not preoccupied with with fitness really but i do see it as important and one of the ways i've always found it useful to think about this is one of the ways to think about priorities and to see your health as important is to imagine a future for yourself and to think about this, imagine your career or your financial goals, whatever they are. And imagine or a business you want to start. And it's five, ten years into the future and you're imagining what that's going to be like. And you think about that picture and maybe it excites you, it's good. You think about the success you're going to have. Maybe you get, you know, uh, your career advances really quickly. You make lots of money, you get recognition, you got financial security, all that stuff. But in this future, five or 10 years down the line, you notice that you've got serious health concerns. You've, you can't breathe properly when you go up a flight of stairs. Okay, you're, you've, got, you've got underlying health conditions. You have to go to the doctor regularly. You're on all sorts of medications. Now, the question is, this is a hypothetical scenario. This is something I'm offering you here in this little exercise. Would you take that option? Okay, that's, what happens? Would you be happy with that? Maybe you're not happy with, with your body in this scenario. And some people would say, maybe they would take that. I think most people would say, I don't want that future. If that success comes at the, at the price of my physical health, it's not worth making that deal or taking that option. Okay, now, of course, that's not the way the life is. That's not, that's not really uh, like a, a choice you're being asked to make here. But in this hypothetical scenario, this shows that if you're not happy with that uh, outcome, that your physical health is important to you. And I do believe that your physical health is important. So you're beginning to see there probably that at the very least, your physical health needs to be taken into consideration. Even if you're not going to say that it's more important than your job or your financial success, maybe it's as important. Okay, so I'm putting down on my list of six priorities or values here, your physical health. 
Okay, that's that's another one. That's number two. Number three. Now, I would maybe I'm I'm not even sure. I think maybe it's higher than your physical health. And I'm not talking about physical health, by the way, in terms of like having a six pack or or, or like being on the cover of a magazine. I'm just talking about healthy, right? It's pretty important. But number three here on my list is relationships. Now, why are relationships so fundamentally important? Well, the truth is that relationships are important to you and they've been important to you since day one. When you were born, I want you to think what you were like when you were a little child, little boy or a girl. Did you have any interest in relationships? Of course you did. Okay, that's what all children want really is connection. They want play, they want fun. They want to feel connected with other people. They want to feel loved, right? That can get conditioned away a little bit, but ultimately we begin to realize that even though we're in this sort of hyper productive mindset sometimes, right? And we have all sorts of other goals. If our relationships in life are overlooked, something happens to us emotionally. Something will, will flare up and we'll say, uh, this isn't enough, this isn't working for me, okay? And that's the very real part of us. It's like, if you do this with any inner child work, you'll find that that child wants connection, it wants relationships. Think about all your really, really great memories in your life. And I would hazard a guess that most of those good memories involve being around other people or it was some kind of a shared experience with other people in your life. So ask yourself that question. Is that a priority for you? Okay. And I would, I would say that over time, at least, it probably will become one if it isn't already consciously there for you, right? Relationships are super important. Another reason why relationships are so important is that when your relationships get better, um, you know, I talk about this in my, in my um, relationships course, um, when your relationship is seen as a priority and it improves and maybe you learn some relationship skills, like I talk about in the course, but when your relationships improve, all areas of your life improve, okay, pretty much. So it's, it's never like a or the relationship is eating into the other areas of my life, usually what happens is if your relationships improve, all the other areas of your life improve at the same time. So that's number three for me, relationships. Now, number four, sticking with our, our, our throwback to the, the inner child or that concept of the inner child is fun. Okay, fun. Fun is super important in life and it's my, my invitation to you here is to start to see fun as a very serious business. Okay, start to take fun in your life very, very seriously. Now, the tendency is for us to become very good, and this is not a bad thing, but it can become excessive, is to delay gratification indefinitely. I keep saying, well, someday in the future, I'll allow myself to have fun. Now, that's a pretty... It's like on one level, it's good, okay? We don't want to fall into immediate gratification all the time. But if we're constantly deferring gratification for some, some day in the future when everything's perfect, that's dangerous, okay? We want to be having fun regularly. We want to be creating memories. Um, you look back on the year, how many days do you remember? And how many times did you have adventures, right? And it doesn't have to be extravagant. It doesn't have to be a big holiday abroad or anything like that but to create some kind of fun memories, to sit down in contemplation, maybe do some journaling on, what do I wanna do? What's gonna be a fun experience for me? Maybe what have I never done before? Maybe what could I do with friends that I haven't done before? But if there's a lack of fun in life, again, what we're gonna have is that self-sabotage thing comes in, or those negative emotions from that part of yourself that requires and needs fun, it's gonna throw up emotional disturbances to get your attention. So fun is number four. Number five, and this is an important one. Now this one doesn't, it's not something that you can figure out immediately. It takes time to discover this, but it's a sense of purpose in your life, okay? To do what you deem to be of value and what you deem to be meaningful in your life. Okay, so if you're doing things in your life that you don't find meaningful, this is gonna be a problem, or you don't value, or maybe you don't even respect, that's gonna be an issue probably. 
So now, if you're a young person, for instance, and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I need to find out my sense of uh, purpose here in life. It, uh, your sense of purpose is really all about you expressing yourself. It's about you <clears throat> living from your authentic personality when you've learned to kind of calm down the nervous system. And you're doing things that just feel right with you. It's about what am I all about? Who am I? What's important to me? And I'm living from that. That's what purpose is. And that can take a long time to discover, especially because we have so much conditioning, you know, uh, in, our, in our culture and society and, and from our background. So to drop some of that stuff, we begin to live more authentically and that's a life of purpose. Now that's important. The last one I mentioned here, and this is the ultimate goal of all of this stuff, is identity. And it's pretty much like point five, but to know who you are. Now, I don't mean that in any wishy-washy kind of, uh, you know, new agey kind of way, like uh, to say that I am a, uh, I'm a spiritual person having a human experience or any of these kind of uh, little sayings, uh, you know, that you can just wrap it up. Oh, that's who I am. That's only intellectual anyway. What I'm talking about here is identity, to live authentically from your own personality, okay? And there's awareness even deeper level behind that personality. But to live in your personality is a huge, hugely important thing. And to come to terms with who you are, to know who you are, and to live from that place, to have the courage to live from that place. And that comes over time. So do you feel you're becoming more authentic? Do you be... Do you feel that it's safer for you now to be more yourself than in the past? That's how you know you're on track with this, okay? I'm feeling like I can be myself more. I'm around people in my life that support who I am maybe more than in the past. That's a good example. So identity, who are you? To live from your authentic self, not these fake sub-personalities that we develop usually from difficult experiences in the past that are there really to keep us safe, but they keep us kind of limited not the persona, not the mask we wear, to live from who we genuinely are. And we're born as, really, and didn't need to be improved on. All it needed was a proper environment, the right encouragement, and it would, it would just express itself more authentically. So to recap, we have number one, stress management. We have to do something in this complex environment. We have physical health. It's probably always going to be part of it. There's going to be relationships, fun, sense of purpose, and to live authentically from your genuine identity. Okay, those are six areas I would look at in terms of how am I doing with that. These are important to me. These are things I, I would I would deem to be significant in my life. If we can focus on those and not get caught up in the weeds too much in the smaller little details of life, it may help with anxiety somewhat. But think about that. That's just me thinking about that that's what i've found to be important for many of the clients i work with and uh well maybe you can add to that list yourself but certainly think about maybe where you would prioritize those things in your life food for thought i hope guys and uh i'll talk again soon bye for now